Today we're talking about prototyping and I'm gonna show you how you can bring your designs to life. But not only that, but I'm gonna show you how to use these features in a later video to create smart animations. So without further ado, let's just jump over to Figma and let's get started. So to enter the prototyping mode, what you need to do is first select your frame and then afterwards head over here to prototype. Once you click on prototype, you will see that you have three main sections. So that's all you need. It's flow starting point, interactions, and then overflow scrolling. These are the main options you have available in Figma to start prototyping. So let's go one by one and see exactly what they do. So the first one is flow starting point. And this is what it does. Basically, it just tells Figma where your prototype is starting on what frame. So if you click on the plus sign, you'll see that you have this blue ribbon over here. And here you're going to see that this is the flow starting point. That means that now if I were, for example, to play my prototype from this play button over here, you will see that my prototype starts on the home page. So this is the role of this flow point. Now you might have occasions when you will need to have multiple starting points. And that's why they actually introduced this feature. So if you want to share this and just showcase multiple user flows, then all you need to do is to select another frame and add a starting point. Now you will see that you have two flows. So if you go to your prototype and if you click on play, if you go here on the left side and you just open the menu, you will see that you have two flows. And this is very good when you have, for example, instances when you want to showcase different user flows, like for example, a person that lands on your homepage from Google or a person that lands on your homepage from an ad or people that are starting on a specific page or how is their journey. So this is very useful because back in the days when we did not have these features, what you had to do is to actually copy and paste your entire project and just redo the flow for everything. And it was like super complicated. But now because of this feature, you can actually use the same designs and have separate flows that you can showcase to your users or to your potential stakeholders or clients. So now let's delete these as we don't need. We just need one and we're going to rename this by clicking over here and we're going to call it uh, just uh, landing home. And this will be our main starting point. So how do you add interactions to get from one frame to another? Well, the first option is to select your frame and then afterwards go here to the interactions. Click here, select your interactions and just select where that interaction will take you. But personally, I don't like this option. The option that I prefer is whenever I'm in prototyping mode, you'll see that if you click on a specific element, it will have this blue cross on it. So if you just click on it and drag it, that will create automatically an interaction. So you just need to drag this to the frame that you want to navigate. So if you click on it, you'll see that on the right side, you're going to have this interaction details showing up. And then here you're going to be able to customize your interaction as you want. So the first option you have is what type of interaction the user needs to take to get from one frame to another. So you have on click on drag while hovering, you have a lot of options. So the second option is what happens after that interaction. So for example, you can navigate to, you can change the frame, you can open an overlay, you can close an overlay, you can go back to a specific page. So these are kind of like the actions that happen after that interaction. And then of course, here on the right side, you'll be able to select your frame. But because we only have two frames on our page, we only have one option, of course. But if you have multiple ones, you'll see here all the pages that are available to navigate to. And lastly, here underneath, you have the animations which as a default is to instant, but you also have dissolve and smart animation. Now smart animation is really cool, but we're going to cover this in a later video as this is a bit more complex. And you also have obviously move in, move out, push, sliding in from one side or another. So you have quite a few options in terms of animations. So now if we close this, also here underneath the animation, you have the state management. Basically what this does is if you go from one frame to another, it just holds the position of your scroll. So for example, if you scroll half the way through the page on my first frame, and I want the user then if he clicks on a specific button to land on the exact same scroll position on the next frame, then I will click this. But for the most part, to be honest, it's like you're not going to use it as there are not many user cases when this is necessary. So now we have the starting point done and we have our first interaction. So if we go back to play, we will see that here, if we click on visit store, the interaction is working. So let's go back and continue. Now, another user case you might have is that you would like to have this top navigation here 
as being sticky so it can be on top of the screen all the time while you're scrolling. So to do that what you need to do is to go back to your prototyping and then on your frame select the element that you would like to be sticky and go actually from prototype you need to navigate to design and here you're gonna have this fixed position when scrolling so if you click that you'll see that if you go back to prototyping now if you go to our home page that top bar will now be sticky so that's how you can actually make an element stick while you scroll but you might be thinking now it's like okay but this doesn't look like an application because it's just the frame taking the entire screen and to fix this if we go back to prototyping and if we zoom out, all you need to do is to basically tell Figma how big the frame is and if you would like that content to be scrollable inside. So in our case, what we need to do is to click on this entire frame and then by holding command, just drag everything up and just tell Figma how big you would like your screen to be. So now if we zoom a bit in, we drag this on top here. Now if we go back to our prototype, we will see that this starts to look more like that. But the problem is that this is not scrollable anymore. And this is because we did not specify if we want this frame to be scrollable inside. And to do that, what we need to do is to go back, select our frame, and here where we have the last option of overflow scrolling, we need to tell Figma how we want this content to behave in terms of scrollability. So, if we go here, all we need to do is to just tell Figma is like, okay, I like this content to be vertical scrolling because I want to be able to scroll all this content inside this frame vertically. So now if we go back to our prototype, we will see that it works as we expect. Now going back to the prototype, another user case, which is very common, is what if you want to have a horizontal scrolling while you have the vertical scrolling? So for this, I will just need to drag this a bit down so we can get access to these cards over here. And what you need to do is you have these cards. So you have these frames. I have two, three frames. We can actually rename this really quick to card one, two, and three. And to create that scroll horizontal scroll effect, what we need to do is to group these or create a frame around them so we can specify to that frame how these cars should behave inside of it. So if we just select all three of them and then we can go really quickly here to design and we can apply an auto layout. We can say that this auto layout should be horizontal and we're gonna give it a spacing of 12. And now we have kind of like our carousel. The issue is that if we're trying now to go back to the prototyping, this will not be scrollable. And that's because even if we change here on the prototype, if we, even if we change the overflow scrolling, if we change it to horizontal scrolling, if we go back, it's still not scrollable. I mean, it works, but it's not perfect. And that's because the frame that goes around all our free cards is as big as those free cards inside. So what you need to do, again, by holding command, just drag this all the way up here. So now the frame that goes outside our cards, it's actually smaller than the actual cards. So if we go to the prototyping, you'll see that now it scrolls as it should. So that's how you create a horizontal scrolling. Now let's go back, let's rearrange everything. I'm gonna do something really quickly by just selecting the frame. I'm gonna add an auto layout and that will bring everything back together. I'm gonna remove it then, this is actually a trick, and re-shrink my frame once again. So this is a quick way of rearranging things in your frame once you start prototyping. And now, the only thing that remains is to shrink this as well, and just have this as the same height. Now, this is a perfect example. It's like when things like these happen, when you see that you're shrinking the frame, but you have everything outside and it's not hidden, that means that you don't have clip content enabled. So to enable that, you need to select your frame, go to design over here, and here just click on clip content. And this will basically hide all the content that goes outside that particular frame. So now we need to make sure that this is fixed as well. And you can see now that if I select this here, I don't have the option of fixed position while scrolling. And that's because 
I have on my entire frame, I've added an auto layout. So just make sure if you don't see that option, make sure that you remove any auto layout that you have on the frame. And then once you click back on that particular element, you're gonna have the fixed position enabled. So now if we go back to our prototype, we can see that if we click play, we can see that everything behaves as expected. And if we click here, then I go to the next page and everything is working fine, except the scrolling, which we need to add really quickly by going here, prototyping, no scrolling, vertical scrolling, done, going back to my prototype, and now it's working fine. Okay, so now everything is almost perfect, except the fact that maybe I would like to just showcase this in an actual device, like just to have a mock-up to show how this will look on a particular device. How do you do that? Well, if we go back and if we don't select any frame, like just don't have any frame selected, go to prototype, you will see that here, the options will change in the sense that you're gonna have devices. So from here, you're gonna be able to select the device that you want as a mock-up. Also here, you're gonna be able to change colors if you want a particular device. So for example, let's say I would like mine to be starlight just so it's different. And you can also change the background. So now, if we go back to the prototype, we will see that this prototype that we created, it's inside a mock-up device. And this is pretty much it. Now, if you want to share this prototype, while you're on the play option, what you need to do is to head over here, and here on top, you're gonna have share prototype. You click here, you just add the emails or copy the link, or you can actually embed the code into your portfolio, and that's it. That's all you need to do. And this is it. This is all you need to know to start prototyping in Figma. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that like button and smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'm gonna see you pretty soon in the next video. Take care, bye.